Okay, so I'm just running updates on my KDE image and I thought I'd install a few extra essentials and get it more useful as an OS for me. So let's hit update all and let it do its thing. So this is Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, but with the KDE Plasma desktop interface, which I really like and I think it makes it a lot more usable, but I'm also gonna install and customize it a bit more. And at the end of it, I'll make this available as a download. Okay, so that's all up to date as you can see. So let's launch the browser. I'm gonna use Chrome for this. And we'll do a search for Pi Apps and go to the GitHub. And I'm gonna copy this line, so installing Pi Apps. Pi Apps is an excellent way of installing games and apps. Now it's meant for the Pi 4, but loads of things work on a Pi 5. So it's definitely still very useful. While I'm down here, I'm gonna pin this to the task manager because I like a browser to be down there and I'll put Firefox there in a minute. Uh, I need a terminal. You can see terminal's not down the bottom. I like that to be down there as well. So I'm gonna press the Windows key and start typing LX terminal and you can see terminal comes up and I can paste that in and hit enter. I'm also gonna pin the terminal here and you can see PyApps has appeared on the top so PyApps is installed now uh, I'm going to close down the terminal because there's another thing about the terminal that I want to change. So if I press Control alt t at the moment nothing happens, but I want it to launch the terminal. So I'm going to press the Windows key and start typing shortcuts, and you can see here configure keyboard shortcuts. And you can put anything you want on here. So if I click on shortcuts, so I can get an add application, and I'm going to start typing LX. Uh, the terminal and you can see it just wants me to use this drop down menu click on that and hit OK but then I want to add a custom shortcut for this so press add and do control alt and T which is the default for Raspberry Pi OS for some reason installing KDE got rid of that but you can see that's done hit apply and I can close this down now if I press control alt T then I get a terminal which is exactly what I want so I said I was going to put Firefox on the bottom bar as well, so let's do that. So let's launch Firefox. So I press the Windows key and start typing Fire. You can see Firefox has come up. Now I can right click and pin to Task Manager. I also want to install PyKiss, which is another great way of installing apps and games onto a Raspberry Pi. And go to the GitHub. And same sort of thing, we need to scroll down to where the installation bit is. Here we go. So let's copy this, go to the terminal and paste it in. And that's all done. It usually needs to be launched uh, before it shows up. So if we go to PyKiss now, so if we press Windows and start typing PyKiss, you can see it's not there, but Py Apps does show up in this menu. So what we need to do is navigate to it and it's here in the home folder, so PyKiss, and you can launch it with this, so just double click it, execute in terminal, and now you can see PyKiss is here. Just to show you what sort of thing you can get on here, install games easily, so you can see that uh, various different things, Doom, Dune, Eduke, GTA, Half-Life, all sorts of brilliant things in there. Uh, also really good for emulation, so Dolphin, there's a PS2 emulator, PSP, all sorts of things. Really, really useful. So let's cancel that, because I'm not gonna do that now. And let's exit. And let's restart this, because then PyKiss will show up uh, when you start typing it. Oh, it's already there. So once you've launched it, it shows up. And let's just show you PyApps quickly. Things that I would install from PyApps one of them would be PySafe, which is uh, a way to back up your operating system. It's the way I'll back up this operating system, and it also shrinks it as well, so you've got an exact copy, but in a much smaller file size. So click on PySafe, and I'm going to install that. And you can see I can close that window already. And if I start typing safe, you can see PySafe comes up, and it gives me an option to be able to back up. I've got separate videos on PySafe and PyKiss and PyApps. So let's install a few more things. Uh, let's do NeoFetch, because I don't think I've done NeoFetch yet. Let's have a look. No. 
sudo at install neofetch. So this is installing with the terminal, but I'll use different ways to install things just to show you different ways of, of how you get things onto a Pi. So yes. And now if we go into NeoFetch, you can see it tells you about my Pi 5. So this is an 8 gig Pi 5, kernel 6.1.0. It talks about the theme, running at 2.4 gigahertz, not overclocked. I'm gonna put some overclock settings in the config.txt, but I'm not gonna enable them because I think that it's probably better that people play around with that themselves. But I'll put the settings in so you don't have to type out the whole lot. So another thing I'm gonna install is transmission, which is for downloading torrents. So if I start typing, I'm not sure if this will work the same. Yeah, so if you start typing transmission, look, get transmission. So you can actually do it and it will detect it and it will take you to the discover store and then you can install it from there. I think that's really cool. So if you start looking for an app that you haven't got, it actually prompts you to say, oh, you haven't got it, but do you want to install it? So password on this is KDE and the user is KDE. And you can see transmission is installing. So sometimes you'll need to download a big file and uh, it needs a torrent client. And I found that this works really well on my Mac and also works really well on this. Let's go back to the terminal. So control alt T and install sysbench. Sysbench. And yes, this is a way of bench testing your Pi, which I'll be needing because I want to do some comparisons on coolers. That's one of the reasons that I'm updating this OS because I want to back it up onto uh, different drives and be able to use two different Pis at the same time but with the same OS. So I mentioned I was going to put some overclock settings in there. Uh, so let's launch a terminal and do sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text. And this is where we can enable various different things. So I've already added USB max current enable uh, equals one, which I've had on in my operating system, but now I've got an official adapter. I'm gonna hash that out. So if I go down and when you hash something out, it means that it's not being used. Uh, and I'm gonna put here the PSP video added just to, just to show the section that I've added in. And I've got a document in here with a few settings. So these are the overclock settings that you may want to use, obviously at your own risk. So let's go back into Nano and paste those in. And let's, to this USB current enabled, let's add in this line just to show uh, what it does basically. I've forgotten I'd added it in there. So copy that and paste that in there. So it just shows what that does, but let's hash all of this out as well because I don't want to overclock people's pies if they're installing it. Force turbo equals one is a separate setting which keeps your CPU maxed. So if you're really looking for performance, you might want to enable that. Let's make this totally clear what it is. Overclock settings. So let's save that with control X and yes. So I've made no changes to that really, uh, but I have put things in there that if you do need to enable them, you can. So now I'm gonna pick some default apps. Uh, so if I start typing default, you can see default applications comes up. So let's click on that. And so web browser, I still prefer Chrome at the moment, so I'm gonna change it back to Chrome. Uh, but I will, I'm sure I'll switch back to Firefox eventually. File manager, so PC Man is my preferred file manager. Email client, I don't use. Uh, console, LX terminal, not worried about maps and dialer. So let's hit apply on that. And I think I've changed this to, uh, yeah, PC Man, and this is already LX terminal. So I'm getting there. Uh, P sensor was enabled uh, in my previous video, and this is basically. Uh, if you press the Windows key and start typing P sensor and I really like it because it tells you the max temperature it got to In fact, there's a bit more at the bottom isn't there. Uh, oh, it's only the it's only the drive that's there But I suppose it'd be nice to Drag that down a little bit. It generally remembers where you last had it, which is quite nice The cool thing about KDE anything you've copied and paste shows up in this little list 
which is quite handy to have. So what else do I want to do? Uh, oh, I was going to put uh, Thuna as a, a file manager, but not as the default one. Um, but I'll show you why. Uh, and that's because if I open a terminal, uh, sudo at install Thuna. I found it's really useful to have as a way of accessing folders and files that you don't get access to in Linux. Um, and I haven't found any other file manager to do it quite so well in Linux. So to enable it, now it's installed, just put sudo thunar and it will call up a file manager, but you have full access to pretty much everything on there. Now if I close this down again, I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just plugging in another drive which has got Batacera on it, which is uh, uh, retro game emulators. So the share folder, you should be able to just have access to and be able to write things to it, but you can't. So if I try and uh, pick, let's go with something like Game Boy Advance. So here, and say I picked a game, Space Twins. If I want to edit that, so just take the S off it and hit OK, you can see completed with errors. And that's because we don't have permission. But also, same would be if I wanted to copy this and put it in the Adam folder just randomly. There you go. It can't do it. But if I now go Control Alt T and then sudo thunar and go to the same share folder and ROMs and Game Boy Advance, and here we go. If we want to change that file name for no reason, uh, but just take the S off the end and hit rename. It lets us do it. But we can also copy it, uh, go back up one, and go into the Adam folder and paste it in there. So you get much more control, but you are using it in the root account, so you can do some damage. So obviously, you know, do that at your own risk, but you are, you know, you're enabling it by doing sudo thunar and ordinarily just use the ordinary file manager uh, and I use this one because it really has great access to my NAS drive it's just super simple to access and it's the default one on Raspberry Pi so I really like it right I think I'm there uh, oh also if I go back to the documents folder I've just updated this a bit um, and I've put in some of the things I've installed let's go full screen uh, so KDE Plasma based on latest Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit bookworm. Uh, I've added all the apps that I've added in this video and the previous video, so watch the first video if you're interested in that. Uh, I've also added this script for Sysbench, and if you want this to run longer, it basically runs at max uh, cores, you can change the time to whatever seconds you want it to be, but I'll show that in a second. I've also added sudo nano boot config.txt, which is the way you get to your config.txt, I've also put sudo raspi config in. Raspi config is a, is a very useful tool for enabling various different things on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, NeoFetch I put in there an IF config which will show your IP address in case you wanted to remotely access the device, which I haven't covered yet, but I probably will in another video. And obviously the overclock settings I've already talked about. So I've just copied this sysbench. Uh, so let's go back to maybe launch htop to show what's running so you can see the cores that are running here so if i launch another terminal and paste that in so this is going to run all four cores for 120 seconds and you'll see boom all up to 100 percent on here and if we go down to the bottom here uh, so it will show what temperature it got and i wanted this because uh, i'm going to do some passive testing on the 52 pi ice tower cooler and the official Raspberry Pi active cooler, but in a separate video. At the moment, the fan's still running really slowly and the max temperature is 54 degrees, so it's not getting hot at all. Uh, but if you wanted to run it for longer, obviously if you keep maxing out those, uh, then the fan is gonna start getting faster and faster to be able to keep it cool. But I thought I'd do a test where I used both the coolers passively because it's easier to tell how effective the actual aluminium heatsink is on its own. Anyway, I'll show that in another video, but I'll make this available as a separate download. I've done it on an SSD drive now. In my previous video, I found 
If I wrote it to SD, I could write it to an SD and it would work. If I wrote it to a USB device, you could write it to a USB device. You may find this differently. I did have someone say that um, they got it to work with my SD card image on a USB device, but this is more designed to work with USB devices. I'm not quite sure why uh, they're not interchangeable. There you go. So that test has just finished. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.